Hello, Internet. Welcome to another episode of Help for the Guildless. My name is Cole Spire, and uh, I apologize to you, my guildlings. It has been a while since I've uh, post posted anything except the Proper Villains podcast. And the reason for that is uh, life happens. I have, of course, been busy at work, and my girlfriend graduated from culinary school, so she has had a lot of free time. So I have been spending my time with her. Uh, not that you guys aren't important, but, like I said, life is life. And while I've been on my break, um, I have noticed quite a few things have been going on. I, I've been posting a lot on Facebook, uh, on the Help for the Guildless Facebook page. If you'd like, you can follow me there and get the information that I don't have time to f do a full-on podcast about. But, if you don't and you just want to follow the videos, that's fine too. So what's been going on? Well, the Daily Dot put out an article, and th the article is a little old, but it's something that I wanted to talk about. I was just going to do a Facebook post on it, and I figured I'd give my actual opinion. Uh, and it's all about Rust. Now, Rust is a survival game. Uh, I don't, I, I don't play it, but I do play survival games. Uh, the one that I have been enjoying recently is um, Don't Starve, and I, I know that's an older game, but I've still been enjoying it. Uh, it's quirky, it's fun, and I've seen I've seen a multitude of them. Uh, one of the ones that I want to get into is Aquatica but my system itself doesn't necessarily have the capability of running Aquatica really well. So, what did the game studio do with Rust? Well, without telling people, they kind of just chose what type of character you were going to play. Now, in Rust, you were able to make your own character and do your own survival thing what they decided to do is give each player that logs in for the very first time an assigned race and gender at random. They used a random number generator to assign these things to the player. Now normally that wouldn't be a bad thing. Uh, th think of Rogue Legacy. Rogue Legacy gives you a randomized character every single time you die. and in that instance, it's interesting, it's fun, it's challenging, because sometimes you don't get the characters that you want, and you have to do it differently. Rust didn't do that, though. Not every single time do you die do you get a new character. Rust, on the other hand, now fixes this randomly assigned gender and race to your Steam ID. Why is this a bad thing? Well, you took away the choice. And that's what the players are pissed off about. It's not that you are assigning them something that they're, they don't identify with. That doesn't matter for people who are actually gamers. Why doesn't it matter? Well, it's simple. I never identified it as a four-foot he blue hedgehog that could run at Mach 5. I don't identify as a undead ninja that you know, can teleport through hell. I also don't identify as any other character that I have ever played that wasn't based off of me. Now, I play the WWE games. I am a WWE fan. Now, I create a wrestler that I try and look as idealized as I can for myself. I identify with that character because I give it my name and I give it my attributes. Now, Dragon Age? Mm, Dragon Age, I'd do something differently. I roleplay. And Rust, unfortunately, gave the choice. It would be as simple as Dragon Age... No, even better, Skyrim, the Elder Scrolls games, don't allow you to pick a player. Don't allow you to pick a character, male or female. They just give you one. And it's not a story driven game at that point. At this point, it's still the same role playing game where you're supposed to be who you are. 
but it's not story driven anymore. It's all about surviving. It doesn't work. Why is Kratos an amazing character to play as in the God of War series, but me playing my wrestler is not something that I would give up? It's simple. I go into one game knowing that I'm not going to have a choice because it's story driven. I go into another game knowing that I can create something that is going to be mine, and I enjoy it that way. So, I hope Rust fixes it. They have the ability to do the random number generator. Why fix it? Why, why make it permanent? It can't be changed. Why? You're going to piss off a lot of people. And I actually have the Daily Dot article pulled up here. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to read some of the comments that have been left on the Rust review page on Steam. And I want you to listen to what they have to say. Uh, this is from Mr. Mayhem. Don't fucking change my gender without my consent. I don't want to be a woman. I'm a man, and that's how I want to play my games. Would refund it if I could. P.O.S. Game piece of shit. See, what happened, just from that, you can tell they did this without telling anybody they were going to do it, and that's bad. You didn't tell people that you were going to change characters that they've already established by playing your game and paying for your game. Maybe you should have thought about that. Now, I love the name of the company. The company is Face Punch Studios. That sounds... Great, that's an awesome name. You punched these people right in the face. And here's from Sander. Forced gender slash race, no thank you, two out of ten. Uh, replic something, I, it's cut off. Uh, thank you, face punch, you just gave me a face punch by shoving a female character into my face. I don't mind seeing it, but I don't want to be one. I like the male body, thank you. I never thought this game would go this way, and you kind of made me sad for it. I do somehow hope this is a late April Fool's Day joke, and that you will give players the option to change to male or female. If you are not, then I like to get a refund and wish you guys good luck in the future, because this is really a stupid move. Why ruining it this way? I agree. If this was an April Fool's Day joke, cool. If it wasn't, it's a bad move. Now, yeah, some of, uh, the Daily Dot is doing a biased commenting section by saying, oh, look, all of the guys just want to play men. Um, well, it's not just that. You took away the choice. I do want to read this one from Th Telerather because it actually, it actually made me laugh when I read it. Um, they say, Rust is a fun game for me, or at least it used to be with Rust Legacy, which I guess is the first version of it before they did this update with the random number generator. I recently logged into the game to see what I rolled with the race gender tied to my Steam ID. I came out as a black man with a small dick. Personally, I do not wish to play as a black man. That is something very far from what I'd want to do in this game. All in all, I'd give this game a 7 out of 10. Main fault is the forced ethnicity and gender. So, he didn't like who he got pinned with. And it, if you think about it, he doesn't want to play as a black guy probably because he's not a black guy. But he's more worried about that than having a character with a small penis. <laughs> Guys are... Gamers are weird. Guys are even weirder. Guy gamers... What the fuck? But he still recommends the game at a 7, to, seven out of 10, which is a decent amount. Decent score, even after it's pissed you off. No, I mean, he gives the, un the, the thumbs down, but that's because he's unhappy with what Rust did to him and what F Face Punch Studios did. If it was a story-driven game it wouldn't be that big of a deal. It really wouldn't. But it's not a story-driven game. What it is, is it's a person-driven game. It's your identity. So, giving the option to play multitudes of different races and 
different genders, you have the option of creating a varied universe. But if you're forcing the randomization, don't make it fixed. Because that's what people are pissed off about. They're making it fixed. Not that they're being forced to play as this gender. They're being forced to permanently play as whatever their chose whatever the random gem number generator gave them. That's what they're upset about. Uh, Facebook Studios, good luck, man. I really hope you do something with whatever it is that you want to do. Now, this, what I'm going to talk about next is social autopsy. What is social autopsy? Well, social autopsy is a site, or was a Kickstarter, it's no longer a Kickstarter, it got taken down, um, but it was going to be a site that did pictures screen caps, tons and tons of screen caps where you, it was showing harassment. Now, it, are we talking about the real definition of harassment or are we talking about the social justice definition of harassment, which is actually just a disagreement in opinion? Um, Candace Owens, who is the head of social autopsy, basically suffered some version of harassment when she was younger and actually it was taken to court and she won and it was a big thing because some of the people that were involved in it actually were the sons of some of the government officials in her state so she knows about harassment she's been through it so what did she do she put up this this Kickstarter to get the site going and it was to highlight um, harassment and what they were going to do is do a thorough investigation into who was doing the harassing and it wasn't for personal use and I want that to be clear this wasn't supposed to be for personal use so there was they were trying to make it so there's no trolling available but it's the internet and people will find ways so it was for employers uh, and it wasn't to stop people from being employed it, but it, it was to show employers this is who you have with you but also going so far as to showing the companies themselves if they are the ones that are doing something wrong it's a good idea it, and as for anti-harassment, it goes, I can kind of get behind it, but I can't really say that it's something that I'm 100% behind. I don't harass on the internet. I don't think anybody should be harassed on the internet. But at the same time, I do have very strong opinions about things on the internet. And if my opinion is being considered harassment, sites like this are damaging for everybody if they can be abused so what happened why why is this Kickstarter taken down here's the fun stuff Zoe Quinn and Randy Harper got a hold of it and there has been a slew of things that have been going on and basically Zoe Quinn asked to contact Candace Owens personally and well, <laughs> Candace Owens didn't know who Zoe Quinn was, and Zoe Quinn kind of was pissed off about that and came at her basically saying, you should know who I am. I am a victim of harassment. In this phone conversation, Zoe Quinn basically told Candace Owens that she needs to shut down her, her site. It's a bad idea because a lot of anti-harassment companies have gone to her, Zoe Quinn, with concerns for her to go to Candace. Candace Owens has been in business for a very long time and she knows that's not how this works. Zoe Quinn is doing what most social justice warriors do and just making shit up on the fly. 
long story short, and I will put a link to um, an interview with Candace Owens from the Ralph Retort, if you want to listen to it, uh, down below. I think you should. It's 30 minutes long. It's take some time. Listen to it, and you can hear what actually happened from the horse's mouth. Uh, not influenced by Ralph whatsoever. He let Candace talk and let her tell her story. Anyway, what ended up happening is the social justice warriors lost their mind. The ones who backed Zoe Quinn and Randy anyway. And suddenly, when this Kickstarter had was on no one's radar, suddenly had tons and tons of tweets and comments saying, you know, nigger, 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 forget my language, um, and Candace happens to be black, uh, saying that they were going to rape her, saying she needs to die, you know, par for the course. Well, Candace is fighting back. Uh, I commend her for being uh, forthcoming with what she wants to do and being up front with everybody. And I also commend her for, for pushing through and actually wanting to do this. If harassment is harassment, it needs to stop. If it's, dis if it's disagreements, you need to grow up. And she's focusing on the, the harassment aspect of it. So, why am I bringing it up if I'm not going into detail and sending you links to other people? Well, it's a heated topic and it's something I do have an opinion on why do I think Zoe Quinn's trying to stop Candace from doing this well there have been rumors from the beginning that Zoe Quinn has been instrumental in her own harassment and what I mean by that is she's creating sock accounts and things like that and harassing herself. And the same thing can be said for Randy Harper. What will happen if this site goes live and there's investigations into Zoe Quinn and Randy Harper, who are known as some of the biggest bullies on the internet, especially on Twitter, sending their legions of followers after people well, Zoe Quinn's going to lose her victim status because she'll be seen as a bully. She'll be seen as a harasser. And even the most die-hard white knight will have to admit that Zoe fucked up and everything that Aaron Joni said possibly is true. What'll happen to Randy Harper if she's proven to be the you know, the bully that she is, well, she'll probably never work in tech again. And that's the issue right there. If a victim, a professional victim, is shown to not be a victim but the aggressor, how much money do you think those people who support her on Patreon will actually continue doing? I'm assuming that if they get exposed for the liars and con artists and bullies that they are, well, about 80% of their funding is going to go away. And why I say 80% is because that other 20% is money that they donate to each other back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, Agent of Doubt kind of showed that to be what it was. Now, I don't do Patreon. I don't want to do Patreon, I have a job, I have a life, I do this for fun, this is my hobby. Um, they live off of it. And they live off of being the perpetual victim. The more that they can show that they have been attacked by people on the internet and how they're continually harassed, they will continue to make a very, very, very handsome living off of the donations of strangers. Now, Randy Harper already lost her job. 
she was forced to resign from um, from her tech position, and she posted an open medium article complaining like crazy how suddenly this company that she enjoyed working for actually was full of harassers and sexists and misogynists and how horrible it was. Taking a note out of Jenny McDermott's handbook by trying to lambast her former employer after singing the praises of her former employer. This is the world we live in, folks. Social autopsy, like I said, is a good idea. I can't 100% get behind it because I don't know the finer ins and outs of what they want to do. But they are an anti-harassment company. A anti-harassment startup that wants to protect people. Not women. People whole thing. Everybody. From harassment. Young, old, middle-aged, out of work, unemployed, CEO, it doesn't matter. They want to protect you. I can't disagree with that. The idea of it is great. But, I don't, like I said, I don't know the finer ins and outs. So, That's my opinion on it. Zoe Quinn and Randy Harper want to stop it because they don't want to be exposed as the frauds that they are. I, for one, just for that, would love to see social autopsy take form. And that's all I pretty much have to say on both of these topics. Uh, I do plan on continuing my SJW tactics. Uh, I've been compiling some protests that I want to show in the next video and I will be doing it as fast as I can. So I thank you guys for watching. Thank you for hanging with me. Thank you for being my subscribers. You guys are awesome. Uh, if you like what I have to say, please hit like and subscribe. Share me around. Um, if you didn't like what I have to say, please tell me in the comments below. Uh, I will try and respond as fast as possible. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and on Twitch. I haven't streamed in a while, but that's because I've been taking some personal time up for myself. And um, I hope to speak to you guys again soon. The new Proper Villains podcast will be coming soon, uh, as early as next week. And it's a pretty good topic. Uh, I'll leave you guys to ponder what it will be when the rest of the villains get together. So thank you for listening. My name is Cole Spire, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Have a good night, everybody.